In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a logo. I think a pretty awesome logo using Adobe Spark posts. Now, up until last week, I don't think I would have recommended this because of the inability to group together objects. But now that that awesome feature is out, you actually have the power and the patience to create a logo from scratch that could be super awesome using the text, icons, and the colors offered in Adobe Spark Post. So let's get started right now. Hey everybody, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing, and of course, as always, if you find value in this video, please consider giving it a like. Any questions, use the comments below. I am going to talk about a really cool way to use Adobe Spark Post. It's a graphic design app that is free for everyone. There is a premium feature set, but you get the full tool set, the full ability, and it is super awesome, super simple to use, and up until last week, it wouldn't be my first choice to teach someone how to create a logo. Now, you can create a logo in Adobe Spark Post because you have this new feature called grouping, and you can actually group together groups. So I'm gonna show you in a tutorial right now how you can create a logo. I'm gonna show you a logo that I created for another project, and together we are gonna start creating, so let's get started right now. So we're in Adobe Spark Post, and I'm really excited for a update that happened just a couple weeks ago where you can now group images together. So when you click on this design here, you are gonna see that it is totally grouped and it has this blue bounding box around it now. And I can actually ungroup it and I can see all the different elements. And up until this feature, I don't think I could ever seriously recommend Adobe Spark Post as a logo design platform solution where you could actually create a, a pretty decent logo for a business, for a project that you're working on. I just don't think I could have. And it's still quite limited and there are definitely things that you would have to create in other programs and, and manipulate and then it's like, well, why are you going into Adobe Spark Post after that? But we're gonna recreate this logo right now so I can show you how simple, how easy it is. And it's really about not having to uh, basically select or select all, right? Control uh, Command A to select this. So that works because there's nothing else on the design. But if I had pictures and I had flyer information, I would basically have to painstakingly, okay? Painstakingly select each one of these pieces of the design, holding down Shift, trying to select it, realizing that the bounding boxes overlap and it doesn't want to select this one and it wants to select that, but it won't select the, the brown in the back and you're trying to get the brown in the back and then when you move it, you realize that it didn't even select that and it unselected it. So it was a pain and I've created designs because I'm super resilient and I'll just like truck through it even though I would rather be an illustrator, but to create here, it's, it's, it's super simple. So now you just press Command A and you group that and you can bring it into another design or you can painstakingly select it just one time and then group it and then you're good to go for the rest of the design. We're gonna go to download, PNG, start download, transparent PNG. So then you have this really nice photo collage here that you bring in and all you're gonna do is add You're gonna go to photo. You're gonna choose to upload a photo. Choose to move freely. And you now have a transparent logo that you can lay on any media that you create for print, for social, whatever it is. What I did here is I used text and I used icon. So I went over here and I went to icon and I searched for a circle. And I wanted to have sort of a rough circle, and so I was looking around and I was trying to see like, are there any circles in this area here that have you know, sort of an artistic component to it? So I found one, and it's gonna bring it out, and, and then I'm gonna add another icon, which was that full circle that's filled in, kinda looks like it works. You just wanna basically set this thing up. So you go over to the color 
and you want to go with coffee colors, right? You want to brainstorm like what are the colors that are going to be amazing to represent my coffee? So if I say, well, I love orange, okay? And I'm going to say, I love black. Well, that's going to be a little bit distracting, a little bit thematically colored. Oh, well, I love red, okay? And I love white, okay? Does that represent coffee? So you want to be able to really take a look at like what are the colors that are going to really represent coffee? And you can go in here and you can really just manipulate and you can change the colors. You could also eye drop from an existing design. So what I actually did for this coffee design is I actually went in, I pulled up a photo and it was a photograph that I found on the free stock photography. It was coffee and you can scroll around and you know, maybe there's going to be some good examples uh, for coffee and actually like this one here because move freely I mean, it really doesn't matter because you're just using it for eye dropping purposes and you're going to delete it later. So you can go over here, you can make it bigger, you can change the order to the back, it really doesn't matter because we're just going to try to eye drop it. So if I go over here to color and I go to selecting a color, that eyedropper tool and that little settings toggle for the color. So I can come over here and I can select a color where you know you get like a nice variety of darkness and rich you know, rich colors here. Like that color right there. Bam. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to order the design, going to order the icon to make sure that I have, you know, the right order here. Going to move that to the front and I'm going to make this one in the center a little bit bigger by just pulling on the corner. And what I'm able to do is now I can just move this and I'm able to group, hold down shift, select both of them and I can group. So then I'm going to go over and I'm going to pull up an icon again. This time I got coffee, not with three E's though. And I'm able to select and you know, there's so many different icons here and you just got to have one that, you know, has some flavor is, you know, a little bit generic, a little bit, you know, interesting and simple can be memorable. Here's this one over here. And I'm able to uh, go into the color there and I can change the color to that, you know, sort of off white color. And I can then move that right over here and I can change the size of it. And we can move it around later. So this, this right here, I wouldn't actually, um, I wouldn't actually change that yet. So now I go, I do an ad, I do text, and each one of these words is actually uh, a different text box. And that's just how I wanted to do it so that I have more versatility, more flexibility uh, in the design. And I go over to um, the font and I, it's um, the Pacifico font. And then what I'm able to do is I'm able to go in, I'm able to change the color and I'm able to change the effect. So I go into the effect first and the effect that I want uh, is just an outline. And I can change the line thickness if I want to. I can even have transparent text where it's just going to be the outline. That's really cool. And then I go to colors and I need to change the color. Now, your branded colors, it's a little bit annoying, but your branded colors are branded only if you have premium. So you can't actually toggle those because they want to keep with the brand. They don't want you to change them. So you actually have to scroll down if you have a premium version and you're going to need to select one of these two tones here. You're going to need to then uh, change just the colors that you need to. Uh, so in the case here, I'm just going to eye drop and I'm going to pick the same color as the coffee cup and I'm going to uh, go with uh, that design there. And what I'm able to do now uh, is just, you know, change the size of that and I can move that over here. And I'm realizing, you know what, like as much as I like the, this orange, it's not, it's not working. Now, if you double click, you are able to select that specific design there and you're able to uh, change the icon color. You see how it's moving around? So you double click on what you group. So it's cool to kind of group things around in 
you know, different ways. And then you can just go in and you can actually select that that brown there, or you can say, you know what, like I really needed to just eye drop this and get it uh, to match uh, that color up here, your reference color, um, however you go about it, and then you click save. Now with the text, okay, you just click off, click on the text. It has a little a little uh, screen that's gonna pop up here. I just duplicate that text. It's gonna make a copy of it. I'm gonna duplicate that, and I'm gonna just write the word roasted. And I can change the size of that. And as I said before, if you double click on this, you're able to, you know, move and manipulate, you know, just that one uh, that you selected over here. So if that like works better for you, whatever. And then I'm going to select the text again. I'm going to click duplicate. This time I'm going to go with uh, the cafe. And so if you wanted to get into that, you wanted to have the little uh, apostrophe or the little accent over the E, so you would just do option E and then press E and then you're good to go. And Adobe Spark's gonna recognize that text. So now you just need to like resize it, right? Get it to move around, you know, the way that the design works for you. The roasted, you know, I'm gonna get it a little bit higher. You can use your arrow keys to move it, um, or you could just move it, uh, you know, obviously with a click of a mouse. So you, it's just breaking up a little bit into that space. I'm actually gonna make this logo just a little bit, little bit larger here, okay? And then I'm gonna move the the, so you can actually, you could change the order um, if the word roasted is bigger, and then you can manipulate the the. So that's a little, a little trick when you're trying to, um, you know, make sense of design layers. So you have over here, what you have is you have a design that is logo material. And it really is quite simple, quite powerful. And what you're able to do with this platform, uh, I think right now with that grouping and with being able to run through and actually creating and, and grouping and designing a logo right now, is like absolutely crazy. It's absolutely crazy that right now in 2020, you have this kind of power coming out of an Adobe uh, software that a, a six-year-old could be using the design software. So now I can literally just select the icon, hold down shift, I can select the text, I can select this text, and I can select this one, and I can select this icon, I can group that. And then I can group that with the other group. So now I have two separate groups. I have my background design and I have my foreground. And now this thing is ready to move. I can move this thing wherever it needs to go. So that's how I create logo designs in this platform. You don't need to be a master of Photoshop or Illustrator anymore to create beautiful logo content. So if you found this video valuable, please consider giving it a like and sharing it on social. And please subscribe because I appreciate those people that are part of this educated by design community. So once again, let's support each other in building our creative courage and our capacity to do awesome things. Thanks so much for watching.